In this tutorial, I want to talk about a couple of the benefits of the new version of ArchiCAD, ArchiCAD 23, and what it does well. The two new tools, or revised tools, that have been created in ArchiCAD 23 is the Column tool and the Beam tool. These allow for multi-sectional columns and beams, so we can create complex profiles. And the other big advantage of what they allow for is cover fills, uh, or a, more of a graphic representation of these. So this is a footings plan, and traditionally in order to create this as coloured, we would need to use either slabs or fills with a cover fill, but this allows us to actually use the beam tool, and that beam tool we see has this grey cover fill, which makes it a lot better to read. Now when we combine this with the ability to use the label tool, which is another thing that I'm quite interested in doing at the moment. This allows us to generate something that's very graphic, descriptive of what we're trying to do, plus most importantly, automated. And so here I'm showing in brown, this is a footings plan, and we're showing the beams and the piers, and we're also showing the infill because this is based on an infill slab. So here we see that I'm using a label tool and based on snapping to a slab, I'm showing the heights of the earth that is the field height. And so this, again, is very useful, very graphic. It's making our documentation process more perfect, more professional, um, and the way that I like to think about it is it's putting more of this ability back into the hands of the architect as being in control of this BIM model. Let's have a look at these beams in 3D, or this whole story in 3D, to understand what we're talking about. So here we see these columns are representative of the piers. We're going to group them together and we're going to lower them down. Some of these at different heights, so we need to change their heights. And of course we want these piers to be sitting underneath the footing. Now the problem with piers is we don't always know what height they should be at. The idea of piers, of course, is that they generally have to go down to bedrock. And unless you've already done pre-drilling, which tends to not happen, you don't know what height those piers will need to go down to. And so there's usually an allowance. Uh, sometimes once we're deep enough, they don't necessarily need to go down to bedrock just because they have so much tension. just in the subsoil, in the foundations of the site would be another way of saying that. Uh, so for now, these columns are based on a height of three meters. And why are we going to this level of detail? Partly for show, just to explain the process and how it can work, but also because that allows us to quantify. That means we're quantifying, in this case, the volume of the concrete, the linear meters of the steel, if we are required to steel reinforce these piers, and also the volume of the earth that will be displaced. So if we then turn on the terrain as well, let's show view, show all first. Then we can see now we're talking about the site and the footings that sit in that site. 